Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Starkey Farmstead. We are located in Zone 9A, 9B in Southeast Louisiana. So excited about today. So we are trying to beat the rain. All right, I can already see the little drops coming down. I can feel it. It's cool out here. But let me tell you why we must beat the rain today. This first black tarp needs to come up. Okay, sandbags and all. If you've ever handled sandbags, you know that once they get wet, they double their weight. So these are already like 35, 40 pounds a piece dry. So I need to get them up onto this trailer and that tarp rolled up and stored away. And the reason is I have a gentleman that's bringing me some trash hay today, three round bales of trash hay. What I mean is it's just basic hay in a field. It's never been sprayed with pesticides or fungicides. Okay, so it's a big deal for us because we're organic and we're regenerative. And I don't want all that into my crops that are gonna be growing here. So once I move this tarp, <clears throat> this first one, what I need to get done today before the rain really comes in is I need to seed my yellow mustard and my New Zealand white directly on the ground here. Let that germinate and then I can come back and lay the hay. Guys, you cannot germinate your cover crop seeds through a heavy mulch. So whether you're using leaves or you're gonna be using hay or straw, any of that, wood chips, you can't germinate in that, okay? Just, it's not gonna happen. You might get a few plants, but you're not gonna get a heavy germination rate. And I need this whole area to basically just go on and germinate out. So my plants will range between 12 inches and 24 inches tall, and they will go grow through the spring and the summer, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave them because I'm going to be doing rows of corn, okra, and black oil sunflower seeds. So we are so excited because we've got a great intercropping design that's gonna go in this front area, but I need to fumigate my soil with the yellow mustard because I had fusarium wilts up here last year and I need to fix my nitrogen because this is the area that held the tomatoes and tomatoes are heavy drinkers. That is where the New Zealand white clover is going to come in okay they're also going to bring in pollinators and they're just going to help overall keep my soil healthy now once the black oil sunflower seeds have germinated and my plants are ready to be harvested they say it takes about 100 110 days the okra is ready the corn is ready i will then terminate this whole area and re-tarp it probably i say we're at the end of april right now so may june july I'm thinking by the beginning of August, this will be retarped. Essentially killing the cover crops that I'm putting down today. I'll kill them, they'll die, and they'll basically turn into the mulch that I will need to plant my fall and winter crops in. So keep watching, we're fixing to get started. This, my friends, is gonna be a job. Our two tarps in the front overlapped just a little bit. So what we've done, move these sandbags back here and we're gonna pull them apart okay but just to show you what it looks like when you immediately pull back your tarp everything's not always gonna be dead okay it is dying so it's easy to pull up here in Louisiana you get a lot of this so it's probably a mouse hole I'm fully expecting a snake <laughs> we had a baby copperhead under the edge of this the other day That'd be some kind of just weed. Like just dark. Yeah, just like Stark. Yeah. Huh. All right. So he's going to continue to. Steve's going to continue to pull back for us. I advise that you wear gloves when you're doing this. Uh, we have found some tremendously large ant piles. Oh, so not a fun guy. Just a, just a plant that can handle the dark. But you can see where I chopped and dropped. This is where we had our uh, squash and cucumber last year. Well, that's a nice size mouse hole. That's all right. Now that it's open, but you can tell like we tarped on top of hay 
and leaves. Last year, this area did not have time to be tarped prior to us planting. So we had a lot of grass breakthrough. This would be some of it, Let's see? So the tarp just helps to kill the root systems and uh, of the weeds. Pull this tarp back up and put the sandbags back. There's that thunder. In Louisiana, you have to use sandbags, guys. It's too windy. We're, we're moving into hurricane season and this will become a flying parachute without something extremely heavy holding it so down. Here it is, guys, and yes, my hair is going crazy. Humidity is a beast on hair like mine. And I am now filthy, but isn't that beautiful? Look at that. So it's up, it's rolled up, it's moved. Sandbags are up. Let's talk about the soil real quick. So when we started our no-till journey 11 months ago, this was Louisiana compacted red clay, okay? So exactly what it was. Let me show you what 11 months of a heavy mulch, no till looks like. Hey guys, here we go. Move some of that mulch. Look at that. All right. So yeah, you can still see, look, look when I squeeze it. It's definitely clay, but look at the color of it, okay? Look at how easily it breaks apart. If you could feel it, you would feel how soft that is, right? So that's the organic matter beginning to build up on top of the soil. Now, as I go deeper, I can definitely feel, oh wee, the clay, like you can even see the color changing on it because it's been a little wet here and yet still makes the clay ball, but watch it crumble back apart. Okay, so that's why we encourage you guys, you don't need to till clay. In fact, tilling clay opens up a, a lot of issues that you don't need. You really don't. Clay is one of the most nutritious soils in you the world. You simply need to learn how to work with your clay instead of against it. And a couple of ways that you can do that is don't till it. Keep a heavy mulch on it. Now I can tell you guys from experience that this is not enough mulch. In Louisiana, this, all of this hay that's here right now and the leaves, they will be gone by the end of summer. Like they'll just deteriorate. Um, we're very moist, we're very humid. And so organic matter breaks down extremely fast in this part of the country, of the United States. So the best thing that we can do is go ahead and seed out with our cover crop seeds today, the New Zealand white, the yellow mustard, let those germinate. As soon as I start seeing them hit about this tall, I will begin to add another layer of hay across this whole area, which will help with those few, you know, plants that were dying but aren't quite dead, right? It'll get all of that recovered and hopefully stop it from coming up. The thing about weed seeds is that when you till, you bring them to the surface, okay? And even if a weed seed is four foot in the ground, they have had weed seeds that have been 70 years old and have germinated. So they're very persistent. The best thing that you can do is continue to add organic matter and push them further and further down. And the less and less that you disturb your soil, the less and less you'll have a weed breakthrough in your no-till garden. Okay guys, what I've got here is a mix of yellow mustard and New Zealand white clover cover crop seeds. So what I'm gonna do, because I do not have a cedar, and I tell you guys all the time, you have to work with what you have in your hands. So I'm just gonna lightly spread, okay? Even over the end pile, yeah, I see it. And these areas are not as heavy with mulch. And that's how you do it. You just spread it back and forth, just like this. Going back and forth. Okay, hey guys, this is my little neighbor and my little buddy. He's going to help us do some cover cropping. Okay, so these are New Zealand white and that is mustard seed. So Miss Sam wants you to put some in your fingers like this, just like that, and toss them. Can you do that for me? Be careful. You want to spread them out now. There you go. Throw some over here. This might be the first time in your life you can throw something and nobody going to fuss at you, baby. Throw them over there. Get them over there. There you go. 
You gotta spread them out. Spread them out. Keep going. You're doing a great job. Get some over there for me. There you go. Walk over here and get some, boo. We're gonna cover this soil. Say we're making our soil healthy. Come this way. Spread them over here. There you go. Get some over there. Yeah, come back this way. You gotta get some more over here. We, we put in cover crops. Say cover crops. Yeah, it's gonna help our food grow. Yeah, there you go. Spread them out. You gonna be my little farmer, huh? There you go, my boo. Come this way, baby. Come this way. There you go. Get them cover crop seeds out there for Miss Sam. There you go. We're going to make this yard so green and pretty. There you go. That's perfect. There you go. Throw some out over here. Mama not leaving you. She ain't leaving you. She did backing up. Yeah. You did a great job. Thank you. So you're welcome. You love coming to the farm? Why? Is it fun? What you get to do on the farm? Fly, fly. That's right. We have fun, huh? We see the chickens and the rabbits and the dogs. Dogs. And you planting stuff this year? Yeah. You gonna come back and help me harvest? Yeah. That's what's up. And then we all be eating good, huh? That's right. My name's Rusty Benoit. My number is 985-514-9085. And contact me. I, I have hay if you need it. Yeah, he's got hay, guys. And look, he'll deliver for a fee. So I highly suggest if you are in southeast Louisiana, central Louisiana, you're looking for hay, Mr. Rusty is your guys, man. Guys, we are so excited. So some good friends of ours that own a local cow and horse farm down the road took down their barn, and they had this amazing aged horse manure and bedding. There's some cow manure mixed in it. It is absolutely beautiful. So it is definitely aged. We won't have a problem. Boys, watch out. And so we got that delivered along with our hay. And that's what we're going to put down. We're going to put down the horse manure first. Then we'll come back and we'll put down the hay. Now, a lot of people are going to talk to me about, you know, horse manure is not a good manure. But guys, I'm telling you, you use whatever you have in your hands, okay? There's always pros and cons to everything except rabbit manure. Be very honest. To me, there you can't find a, a con to rabbit manure. But I have a quarter acre market garden that... I feel like with what's going on in the world right now, I need to be able to produce more food than I've ever produced before. So we're stepping it up at Starkey Farmstead. I would never let that aged, beautiful compost go just because it's horse manure. I know the owners of the horses, these are the most healthy horses you've ever seen. Do they use wormers? Yes, but these horses graze out in the fields most of the time. And this is just the manure that was in the old barn that they torn, tore down. So by now the earthworms have worked, I've seen huge ones, have worked through this horse manure enough to pull any toxins out of it. They don't spray anything on their hay or feed their animals any kind of crazy feed that I have to worry about. So just know where you're getting your products, know who you're getting them from, and you can avoid a lot of the toxic issues of bringing stuff onto your farm. That's a lot of people buy from big box commercial stores and then realize, oh, I messed up. So if you're gonna get manure, if you wanna use horse manure or you wanna use cow manure, you really need to get it from somebody that you can trust and that you know.